Good evening, good evening, my friends. Today, today, I want to share about the enemy's tactics. How he speaks these words to just completely discourage our heart. And, and he knows exactly what to say. And a perfect example of this is found in 2 Kings. It's also found in Isaiah. Um, but it's the story of the king of Assyria coming against Hezekiah. And I'm just going to read uh, out of 2 Kings 18, verse, starting verse 28. It says, Then the Rebshakeh stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language and spoke, saying, Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us, and this city shall not be delivered, into, be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Hearken not to Hezekiah, for thus says the king of Assyria, Make an agreement with me by a present, and come out to me, and then every man shall eat of his own vine, and every one of his own fig tree, and you will all drink water from your own cistern until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of oil and honey, that you may live and not die. And don't listen to Hezekiah when he persuades you, saying, the Lord will deliver us. And, man, I just think it's important that we, you know, first of all, I encourage you to read this whole story. And to look at how this uh, Reb Sheka is is speaking directly into what these people like. How does he know, you know, that that they are depending upon the Lord to deliver them? How do they know that Hezekiah is telling them that the Lord is going to deliver them? How does he know that they have hope? Because Isaiah had given them a word saying the Lord is going to deliver us. So I think this is a perfect example of a spiritual battle and, and a spiritual uh, enemy. Like uh, uh, a principality and power of darkness speaking through a man. So because the Lord had promised to deliver Jerusalem. And this guy's trying to discourage all that. And... And he says all these things. And then it's interesting how he says, uh, basically, don't, you know, don't try to trust in the Lord. But then he tells the people, listen, you know, like, it's important to see what the enemy does. Like, he'll discourage, basically say, uh, God's not going to help you. But listen to me, and, and I'll submit to me, and I'll, I'll give you your own land. I'll take you to a land better than your own, a land like your own, but where you'll have food and you will live and you won't die. Because if you stay here, you're going to die by my hand. But if you come with me, you're going to live. So the enemy always works this way. There will be like a discouragement. There will be, uh, you know, like, like you can't trust in God, it's hopeless, he's lying to you, or, or someone else is lying to you about putting your trust in God, and things aren't going to change, and it's hopeless, and then there's another way that is presented, and it's not the way that the Lord has chosen or promised, but it's a way that can make sense, and that you could keep your life, and you could uh, maybe enjoy some more, you know, you're not having to suffer anymore, but um, that's not the Lord's way. The path of least resistance sometimes is not the path that God has chosen for us. <laughs> it's better to stay and suffer and wait for the Lord's deliverance than to think that the Lord is not going to save and take the path that the enemy has set before us to relieve ourselves of suffering before we wait for God so or before the Lord's deliverance which obviously if we if we stop waiting for the Lord he's the deliverance isn't coming so so just pay attention just want to encourage you tonight 
stay steadfast wait for the lord trust him believe him don't believe the lies wait for the lord and he will deliver you amen